Hey everybody, welcome to part two of our tutorial uh, where we're going to uh, introduce some sound. So there's our blue sphere again. We can click on the color message to change it to red. You can set it aside for a moment and drag some sound in. So you can simply take a sound file and drag it and drop it into your patch and then we connect it to a um, easy DAC tilde object, which turns into a little speaker icon uh, that we can then connect the first two outlets of our sound file to the easy DAC. And uh, mine's already on, yours will be off when you create it. So just like a toggle, you click it to turn it on. And turn my volume down here and listen to our sound. Very nice. and that we can take this sound and we can divide up its frequency spectrum using cross tilde, which is a type of filter, it's a crossover, um, that takes the sound and chops it into different frequency uh, bands. It's like a hatchet that, uh, in this case, we'll be chopping it at 200 hertz. So all the sound under 200 hertz is gonna come out of the left outlet and all the sound over 200 hertz will come out of the right outlet. So if we listen to it now, we're just going to hear the low frequency components of the sound. And in the beginning, there aren't any, or they're extremely, extremely low. But when the bass drops in, we'll hear that. Right, so that's all the components of the sound under 200 hertz. And we could listen to, for instance, all the components of the sound over 8,000 hertz, and that's gonna give us the very, very high end of the sound. The high component comes out the right, and there's the high frequency components of the sound over 8,000 hertz. Now that's extremely high. Uh, for this example, we can try something more along the lines of 4,000 hertz. And we want to use this sliced, this frequency sliced sound to drive our imagery. Um, so let's take these sounds under 200 hertz and compute the, uh, the, the average volume of those sounds because we don't want to deal with the sound directly. Um, the information isn't useful to us. Uh, the, the same information that's going to the speaker uh, is not going to be useful to drive the imagery. But, but one analysis of it that is useful to drive the imagery is the average volume. So we use AVG tilde to calculate the average volume of the sound. And then you need to make one more connection to make this AVG tilde work that I'm not gonna explain right now, just know that you need it. It's the middle outlet of the JIT.world to the left inlet of the AVG tilde, and it's computing the average volume of the sound. I'm just gonna set this sound file to loop. And we can see uh, that that becomes a numeric volume that we can see. Uh, as a number. So there's an object that's called the floating point number box that we create with the letter F that will show us as a number what that average volume is. This is a floating point number box, which is a way of displaying numeric information like, like, a, like an average volume. It just shows us that there's a number coming out. And of course, once we have it as a number, we can then take that number and apply it to something else, like, for instance, the size of our sphere. So first of all, let's look at how to change the size of our sphere with a message. We create a message, and we use the scale message. And if we want to make this uh, 0.1 meter in every dimension sphere, we can do scale 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, send that message to our grid shape by clicking, and now we have a small sphere. Well, that's handy. Um, if we want to use a changing number to uh, change the size of the 
sphere, instead of typing in 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, we can use dollar sign one, and that will just be replaced by whatever number we pass into the message box, and now our sphere is sound responsive. So we're chopping out all of the high frequencies, we're only using the low frequencies, we're calculating the average volume of the low frequencies, and then we're having that volume, num the number that indicates the volume, that indicates the loudness of those low frequencies, mapping it directly to the scale of the sphere. And the reason why I have three of these is because this, the sphere has a width, a height, and a depth. So we're changing the width, height, and depth of the sphere. Scale, dollar sign one, dollar sign one, dollar, dollar sign one. And that's scaling our red sphere based on the low frequency sounds. So we can do the same thing with the high frequency sounds here. Let's make another sphere. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this one and I'm going to take this whole structure here. I'm going to take, I'm going to draw a box around my average, my number box, my scale, and my jit.gl.grid shape. I'm going to copy them and paste them. And now I have this second sphere, a blue one. And I'm going to calculate the average of the high frequency sounds, making the same connection from the middle outlet of the jit.world into the average tilde. And the spheres are in the same place, so I'm going to look at one more, uh, one more attribute, which is at position. And position uh, takes three values as well, x, y, and z. So if I want to move this a uh, half a meter to the right, I say 0.5 in the x dimension, 0 in the y dimension, 0 in the z dimension, and this will move the blue sphere to the right. And there we can see my blue sphere that's representing what's happening in the, in the sound over 4,000 hertz. And we can listen to this with the, with the whole sound. And we can see the two spheres are responding nicely to their different parts of the sound. The red sphere is responding to the bass, and the blue sphere is responding to the high frequency sounds. The one thing that's a little odd is the blue sphere is small. Why is that? Well, it's because these high frequency sounds are quieter than the low frequency sounds. So here, we can start to uh, work with these numbers, massage these numbers a little bit, and we'll be doing this a lot over the course of the semester so that we get a result that's more like what we want aesthetically. Um, if I want the blue sphere to be uh, larger, I can do a couple of things. Uh, one, I can just take this average volume, and because it's a number, I can add to it or multiply it to make it bigger. So what happens if I add to it? Well, let me delete this patch cord and create a new object that has a plus sign in it, and that will add some value to the average volume of the uh, of the high frequencies of the sound. So let's say 0.5. I'm going to add 0.5 to this average volume, and let's see what that does in terms of scale. It starts my it starts my blue sphere pretty big. So we can see that the blue sphere is responding, but it's still responding in a slight way. It's just starting bigger. And that's what addition is going to do for us in this case, is it's going to um, you know, calculate this average volume and then add a fixed value to it. So the sphere itself will get bigger, but the changes will remain the same size. So another thing we can do is multiply. 
and that in multiplication, uh, when you're doing multiplication in the computer, it's uh, it's the asterisk, it's shift eight, multiply. We could take this volume and let's say we multiply it by two, doubling it. And notice I put a decimal point after the two because I want uh, floating point arithmetic here. I want it to include fractions. Um, so I'm gonna multiply it by two. And, um, and let's see what that does. So we can try and change this. We can say, let's let's say, what if we multiply it by four, make it more extreme. So now our loudest blue sounds are going to make the blue circle four times as large. See, it gets quite large there as they would have if we didn't do any multiplication. The computer does all the math for you. You don't need to do this math. You don't need to multiply this crazy number by four. The computer does it for you. But we're just making the average volume have four times greater effect on the scale of the blue sphere. And then the last thing I want to show quickly is the animation object. Jit.anim.drive. Jit.anim.drive uh, is a very straightforward object um, that we connect to any object that we want to animate. We want to drive it uh, um, around the screen. And we'll send it a message. I'll just show you one message for today, which is move to. And move to takes four arguments. It takes an X, a Y, and a Z position, and a time in seconds. So uh, if we want to move the blue circle from this position over to this position, right now it's at 0.5 in the X, 0 in the Y, 0 in the Z, so 0.5, a half a meter to the right of center. So if we want to move it a half a meter to the left of center, that would be negative 0.5. 0, 0, and let's say we want it to move over 5 seconds. Uh, let's move it over 4 seconds, right? So we're moving to point five, negative 0 0.5, which is half a meter to the left of center. 0, meaning we're not moving it up and down at all. Another 0, meaning we're not moving it back and forth at all. And we're doing it over 4 seconds. I connect that to the jit.nm.drive. And when I send this message by clicking this move to, we're going to see the blue sphere move from its current position, which is 0 0.500, over four seconds to negative 0 0.500. Here it goes. And if we wanted to move it back, we'd need another message box that moved it back to 0 0.500. And the four is the number of seconds it moves over. Hope that you found this accessible and useful. See you soon.